Hi, everyone. Mohak here from ClayStack. Uh, quick background about myself. My, is it good? Okay. <laughs> okay, quick background about myself. My background is in computer science. Uh, have been in crypto for quite a few years. Uh, I run a liquid staking protocol called ClayStack. Prior to this, I was running a staking as a service company with around $200 million uh, capital and delegations. Before that, that I was running a Web3 fund. Um, we launched uh, on Polygon last year. Then we launched on a couple of chains on Testnet, Graph, uh, Aptos, Phantom. Now we're launching our ETH LSD next month. So I wanted to share a bit about like uh, our architecture. So right now, there are like LSD has become super hot, which is good. Uh, two years back when I was explaining LSDs, uh, a lot of people used to say that, are you building a staking dashboard? So it's good that <laughs> uh, I don't have to explain that anymore. Uh, that's out of the picture. Uh, but even today, what's happening is um, everyone says that we want to onboard billion users, 100 million users. Uh, but at the end, everyone just focus on onboarding 100 wallets. That matters. Uh, no one really cares about decentralization when they say that they do. Um, because it's not in a lot of protocol interest to actually care about decentralization. Uh, you get like scalability issues and whatnot. So uh, in the current market of liquid staking, if you see, there are protocols which are extremely scalable, amazing. You deposit billion dollar ETH, it will get staked someday. Uh, then at the other end, uh, uh, but at the same time, extremely centralized. Uh, and on the other end, you have protocols which are kind of decentralized, but non-scalable because of high bond requirements for, from home stakers. Uh, and the thing is that I've lived that journey. Uh, in, the, in the early times when I was validator in 2018, the problem that I faced was I was a technically sound validator. I had the infrastructure to not get my nodes slashed. But when it comes to self-delegations, I did not have any. Uh, and proof of stake worked in a manner that rich got richer and poor gets out of the picture. So uh, the problem I was facing was like, what do I do? Like no one is delegating to me. Uh, and everyone is like delegating more and more to the bigger guys who are becoming even more bigger. Uh, and that's what's happening now with Ethereum validators, which is even more difficult because it's not delegated proof of stake. Um, so what we are doing is uh, we are building an architecture, which is DVT based modular architecture, uh, comprises of multiple DVTs uh, that we can build upon, uh, SSV, OBOL. Uh, and the beauty is that the clusters are combination of professional stakers as well as home stakers. So if any sanctions come on professional validators, then the home stakers can take over. If the home stakers lose internet, get crappy machine or whatever, uh, then the professional validators can take over. But at the same time, uh, the minimum bond requirement comes in. So we have lower bond requirement than anyone else. Uh, currently it's 4 ETH, we are trying to bring it lower. Uh, because of high fault tolerance of DVD. But at the same time, if you think about it, for home stakers, even 4 ETH is smaller. So we have a, this concept of validator funding providers, where imagine, um, imagine someone, like, someone like you, who is a DGEN, who wants to bankroll uh, other, uh, other validators who have been performing well for last six months. Uh, and you can lend them ETH at like 9%. And, those home stakers will happily borrow it because for them they are earning like so much commissions uh, from uh, from the node that they are running. So that gives us like a lot of scalability and decentralization. Yeah. So that's a quick uh, architecture about me. I'll be here at the back if anyone wants to chat. Uh, thanks a lot for listening.